When it comes to developing the upper body, the bench press is a common go-to exercise. And for good reason too, it's undoubtedly a time-tested exercise. But can the push-up, an exercise often overlooked due to its simplicity, compete with the bench press? A 2017 study by Kokuchi and Nakazato compared the bench press and push-up for muscle and strength gain. 18 young men, with at least one year of training experience, were split into a bench press group and push-up group. The bench press group used 40% of their one rep max. The push-up group adjusted their hands and feet to mimic a resistance that would be roughly equivalent to a 40% of one arm load on the bench press. For some participants, this may have been regular push-ups, while for others, it may have been variations of kneeling push-ups. You may be questioning the use of a 40% one arm load. However, a previous meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues demonstrated that loads between 30% and 85% of 1RM induce similar muscle growth, provided reps are taken to failure. Both groups perform three sets of their exercise to failure, twice per week, for eight weeks. Ultrasound imaging was used to obtain thickness of the pectoralis major and triceps brachii before and after the training period. 1RM max on the bench press was also tested before and after the training period. What the researchers found was that the push-up group similarly increased pectoralis major thickness and triceps thickness to the bench press group. Put differently, the push-up was as effective as the bench press for hypertrophy of the pectoralis major and triceps. As for increases in bench press one rep max, both groups experienced statistically similar increases. Although, looking at the overall percentage increases, it does slightly favour the bench press group. It's quite likely that the small advantage with the bench press group was a result of the principle of specificity. Although the push-up is quite biomechanically similar to the bench press, it makes sense that the bench press group would have been more primed for a one rep max test on the bench press, given they were training the movement for eight weeks. Something that isn't a limitation of the study itself, but in practice, is that both groups use the 40% one RM load. As I mentioned earlier, for muscle growth, this is perfectly fine, as we know similar muscle growth is achieved with loads ranging from 30% to 85% 1RM. However, when it comes to maximizing strength, we know heavier loads are generally preferred. And therefore, it could be argued that for overall strength development, the bench press is superior as heavier loads can easily be used. While it is undeniable the bench press is far simpler to use heavier loads with week to week, you can actually create heavier resistances with the push-up through manipulating your body position. A 2011 study by Eben and colleagues explored what percentage of your body weight you press during different variations of the push-up. During a regular push-up, you are pressing roughly 64% of your body weight. Elevating your feet increases this percentage, while elevating your hands decreases this percentage. Kneeling push-ups have you pressed roughly 49% of your body weight. You could perform variations that have you performing a low amount of reps, and you may progress through adding reps here and there, but also through performing harder push-up variations, thereby allowing you to continuously use heavier resistances and lower rep ranges. A 2018 study by Kotarski and colleagues did compare progressive push-up training to the bench press for muscle and strength gain. 23 men with 2-6 to six months of training experience were randomly assigned to a progressive push-up group or bench press group. The bench press group started out with three sets of six reps with a given load and aimed to add reps until they achieved three sets of eight reps. Once they achieved three sets of eight reps, load was increased by 4.5 kg and they reverted back to three sets of six reps. This cycle was repeated throughout the study. Here are the different exercises given to the push up group. If a participant in the group could perform three sets of three reps on a particular single arm progression, they started on this exercise. If they couldn't, they started on a double arm variation they could complete for three sets of six reps. Once a participant could perform three sets of eight reps with a double arm variation, they progressed to the next level. Whereas if a participant was performing a single arm variation, once they achieved three sets of four reps, they progressed to the next level. This cycle was repeated throughout the study. Both groups trained three times per week for four weeks. 
Ultrasound imaging was used to obtain thickness of the pectoralis major. One rep max on the bench press was assessed too. Also, for both groups, the level of push-up according to the table they could comfortably perform was assessed before and after. For increases in pectoralis major thickness, both groups experienced statistically similar increases. However, if we look to the raw percentages, we can see the push-up group actually had a slight advantage. Both groups significantly increased their one rep max on the bench press, with no statistically significant differences between them. However, looking at the raw percentages, the bench press group does appear to have outperformed the push-up group. This again is likely due to the principle of specificity. Also following the principle of specificity, the push-up group on average were able to perform a push-up variation 2.78 levels higher than at the start of the study, while the bench press group only progressed by 0.78 levels, which basically isn't any progression at all. One limitation of this study is that it only lasted 4 weeks. It would have been interesting to see how this study design would pan out in the long term. Nevertheless, as we can see from both the longitudinal studies detailed in this video, the push-up does a very respectable job compared to the bench press. It seems that for hypertrophy of the chest and triceps, the push-up has similar potential to the bench press. Unfortunately, neither of the studies looked at growth of the anterior deltoid. However, research by Tiller found that weighted push-ups elicit similar activation of the anterior deltoid to the bench press at four different load equated conditions. Although EMG, which is used to measure muscle activation, comes with its limitations, given the biomechanical similarities between their exercises, there's likely a good chance both exercises induce similar anterior deltoid growth. Just as a reminder, Although the bench press is simple to overload, as shown in the Kotarski study, as well as the Eben study, there are tons of harder push-up variations that can be used to apply progressive overload. Again, a combination of adding reps and performing harder variations is what can be done. Other push-up variations not shown in this video include the resistance banded push-ups and weighted push-ups, which are both great options too. Moreover, you can combine different push-up variations. For instance, you could perform resistance banded elevated feet push-ups. Something that is essential I mention is that even though this video is a comparison between the two movements, we must remember that in practice, we don't need to pick either or. Both the push-up and bench press can be included in a training program successfully. When it comes to maximizing hypertrophy or strength, the use of only one exercise will likely not achieve this. And as we've seen from the two longitudinal studies in this video, the push-up actually has quite a good carryover to bench press strength. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, it would be greatly appreciated if you leave a like. Also, let me know what you thought of this video. What are your opinions on the bench press and push-up? Do you perform either, or even both, in your training program? I have plenty of more videos planned, so if you think you'd enjoy my videos, it'd be awesome if you consider subscribing.